Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, also known as ETCG1 on this here channel. How the heck are you? Hey, on the ETCG1 channel, we do not do repair videos. We talk about repair related stuff. Uh, so if you're looking for repair videos, you wanna head over to the Eric the Car Guy channel. I'll make it easy by posting a link in the description. You can go there now. Otherwise, if you wish to stay around and join in the discussion, welcome. The topic of the day, shop etiquette. Shop etiquette is, is an important part of just being a technician and working as a technician. And I, I think some of this stuff applies to other professions as well, but I'll, I'll say that I, I've done a few different jobs in my, in my life, and I'm sure you have too, and um, feel free to share them in the comments. But none of them quite had the, the feel that, that being a, an automotive technician did. And I, I had more than one job as an automotive technician, and I worked in more than one shop, and there were different dynamics in each and every one. I guess the first thing that I'm gonna inject is, is not every shop is the same, not every dynamic is the same, but there are similarities and personalities that, that at least in my experience that I ran into. For lack of a better word, I think automotive technicians might have ego issues, myself included. Because of that, I think that creates a certain environment when you're working with a bunch of people with inflated egos. I mean, even if you're young and first coming into the field, you walk through the door, you're full of boundless enthusiasm, you still have an ego. You still have, you know, that, that education, you know, I just graduated from school, I know all the stuff, I'm ready to go. Whereas the people that may already be established in the shop that you're, you're entering, They've seen it all before. They've seen you come and go. So how do you conduct yourself in that situation? A lot of people come to me and they ask me, you know, hey, Eric, is it a good idea to get involved in the automotive uh, repair profession? And I'm, I say yes and I say no, because you have to be a particular type of person to really latch on to it. I've known people that have gotten into it that have, well, they didn't do so well. And I don't know if that's because maybe they just didn't fit into the shop that they found themselves in. Maybe they got into a shop that they didn't quite get along with somebody or their employer or they just didn't fit. And they took that as, as, a, as a referendum on the, on the profession as a whole. And then there's, there's other times where you come in and, and this is rare, at least, at least in my experience, this is rare. I, and, and all the places I've worked, I've worked five or six, about five or six different places as a technician in the, and it was actually the first job I had as, as a professional technician in an independent shop where the atmosphere was really, really great. It was, it was, it was open, it was honest, it was, it was just a really good place to work. And I think that started with management. Uh, at that particular shop, the owner also worked out in the shop and he was a good guy. He, you know, had, had been a technician for a long time. He'd worked for Honda for many years at the dealership. So he knew what that was all about. And when he created his shop, he decided to create, create a different environment. I, I guess what I'm doing now is I'm explaining shop dynamics and the different, different environments you might find yourself in. Uh, in dealership environments, it's, it's more of a business environment. In, in that business environment, they have different expectations on you. They have different expectations of what they expect from you, what, what they hope to get from you, what, what type of work. You may be more specialized in a dealership situation. You may just be a lube tech or a brake tech or something like that. And then there's like the, the chain environments. And when I speak of chain shops, I'm talking about you know, your, your, your bigger companies like your, your NTBs and your Firestones and places like that. Uh, I managed one of those stores for a while, and those have more of a high pressure -y sales kind of environment. So you would conduct yourself different in, in those shops than you would in you know, the other ones that I mentioned. And I think the shop etiquette is dependent upon, uh, is heavily dependent upon the type of place that you end up, the type of work environment that you end up in. Because the people that would be in that work environment would be different. In, in the different types of places. Like I said, some people fit in, some people don't, people come and go. But with automotive technicians, like I said, there's some ego in there. If you've been doing this for a number of years, you know, I've, I've talked about the thousand yard stare, and, and that's a real thing that I've seen. You know, guys that have been doing this for a while that have, 
you know, sunk a bunch of money in tools and, and sacrificed their, their lives and their bodies to do this, uh, they're, they're, some of them are a little wore out. Some of them might be a little salty. And some of them might not like the new guy coming in. So what do you do as the new guy coming in? How do you conduct yourself in those situations as far as your shop etiquette is concerned? Well, I always say, you know, the less you say, the better. The minute you open your mouth, you start diminishing your position, so to speak. So if, if, if it were me and I were going into a shop for the first time, I'd say as little as possible. I'd try to study the environment. Um, some guy might be really sensitive about uh, you using his tools. Um, that's, that's a big shop etiquette kind of thing. Personally, I really don't like lending out my tools at all. It seems like every time I lend a tool out, it either doesn't come back or comes back broken. It's, it's a diminishing return for me. And I do what I can to, to not have to borrow tools from others, but when I do, I'm very respectful of those tools and I try to treat them as if they're my own. And I try to treat my tools pretty well. And, you know, you work with people, you, you have to trust them to some degree until they give you reason not to, I suppose. So I would advise taking some time, feeling the place out, getting to know the people there, getting to know the dynamic of the shop. Because you get all those different egos into one place and they all interact with one another and they all you know, eventually, hopefully, meld together to a certain point. Um, I've worked in shops where there was, it was kind of a hostile environment because of maybe one person in particular who just sort of offset the balance of things. And you couldn't, they weren't necessarily approachable. You couldn't necessarily talk to them. And when you did talk to them, it was almost guaranteed to be some form of confrontation. Uh, Sadly, we, we, we find ourselves in these places. And when you do, you just kind of have to roll with the punches, particularly when you're new to the game. Now, if you're established and you've been in the shop a while and you've been dealing with this difficult personality and you know, maybe you've even done what you can to try to, try to get rid of them, try to move them on along. Uh, and, and, and situations like that often make it even more difficult because maybe your employer or your, your boss doesn't, doesn't want to get rid of somebody. They, they have a certain schedule to keep and they have everybody they need to fit that schedule and even though this is a difficult difficult personality for you to deal with it you got to deal with it and like i said i think i think some of this a lot of this is true for many different professions but i think it it has a certain it has a different element because it's auto repair because as i said at least in my experience many people in the auto repair profession uh, might have some issues with ego and those issues can translate into a number of personality quirks, let's call them, that, that could be difficult to deal with. Uh, as I mentioned before about the tool thing, some people are really animate about that. Some people are just really animate about you doing something a certain way. It's either, your, it's either their way or the highway, period. And that's, that's how it's going to be. That's the way they see it. I don't like being one of those people because if I've learned anything in doing this, it's that there's a hundred different ways to do the same thing in many in many instances and you just might learn something if you keep an open mind that that person even if they've got say a, a difficult personality to deal with they may have something to offer in there they may come up with some solution some way of doing something or some special tool or whatever that they made or found or you know I, I, there's even tools that i've found in the grocery store and gotten tips on that from some some people so Everybody has something to offer, I suppose, and it's, it's, it takes you some time to find it. So as far as shop etiquette, try to, try to be accommodating in the sense that, you know, be focused on your job, because ultimately you're there for the customer. Uh, well, you're there for a paycheck, but you're also there for the customer. So don't let the customer suffer in a situation if there's, if there's problems with your shop dynamic. Um, you know, it, You've really got to make sure that, that they walk away with, with a decent experience despite the day that you're having. And that can be a very difficult thing to do sometimes because, you know, hey, let's face it, if somebody's giving you a hard time and giving you a bad day, it's really difficult to focus on what you're doing. But, you know, try, try to leave that behind you if you can, at least for the moment. And, you know, consult the people in authority. Maybe they'll do something about it. Hopefully they'll do something about it. Hopefully they'll recognize the value uh, that you offer and they'll do what they can to try to have a sit down with whomever and you know set them straight and get them get them on the on the right path to where they're not causing issues with everybody in the shop because that just makes for a bad day for everybody so 
shop etiquette. What are your thoughts on shop etiquette? What are your experiences in the shop? Uh, do you have certain quirks, certain lines that you don't uh, want people to cross? Or are there certain lines that you don't cross? Are there things that you will or will not do? Have you got your own agenda? Have you got uh, things set up a certain way and this is the way you do them? Or are you more open-minded? Do you, are you more accepting of, of new things that come along? Uh, how do you conduct yourself in the shop? How do you feel about shop etiquette? The answers to these questions and more in the comments. And you know what, in addition to those comments, down below I'm gonna put a link in the description to a discussion about this video over at ericthecarguy.com. And hey, if you have automotive questions, head over to ericthecarguy.com. And you know what, instead of going through some lengthy explanation of all the things that you can do over at ericthecarguy.com, recently I realized that, you know what, there's an introduction video right there on the homepage that tells you all about it. Let's just put it this way, if you have automotive questions, go to ericthecarguy.com, watch the introductory video, and see all the wonderful things we have to offer there for you. Let's just leave it at that. If you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter, and I close my videos with be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. I'll see you next time.